Look at this. Would you believe me if I told you? All of this is built without writing a single line of code. This is the power of Framer components. And today I'm going to show you how to use them step by step. Welcome to the chapter 4 of our Master Framer course. By the end of this video, you will be building Framer components like a pro. And trust me, you don't need to be a Framer expert to follow along. But before we jump in, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Bupin, a web designer with over 3 years of experience. I've worked with many clients and even built a successful website template business. And now I'm here to help you master Framer and elevate your website design skills. Alright, here's the plan. We are starting from scratch. I'll explain what components are, why they are super useful and then we'll get hands on with making components in Framer. We'll create buttons, cards, interactive elements, everything you need to master components. I'll keep things simple, no boring theory. Just real practical stuff. If you're following along, open up Framer and let's start building. Now before we start building, let's first understand what components really are. Because once you get this, everything else becomes super easy. Let's say you design a button, but you have to use this button many times on your website. So you can either make it from scratch every time, which is well a waste of time. Or maybe you can copy and paste this button in multiple places. Well obviously that's a better option, right? But here's the thing. What if you want to suddenly change the size or color of the button? Now you have to manually update every single copy. And what if you miss one? Well your design becomes inconsistent. There's a much smarter way to do this. Framer components. Now instead of copying and pasting. You can turn this button into a component. Now you can reuse this as many times as you want, but with one huge advantage. Now you may ask, isn't this exactly the same as copying and pasting? What's the difference? Actually, there's a huge difference. If you update the main component, every copy updates automatically. No more fixing the same button in 10 different places. Look, I'll change the color of this button and every single instance updates instantly. That's why components are a game changer. And it doesn't stop there. Components aren't just static. They can be interactive, flexible and even adapt to different layouts. For example, let's say I have a pricing card. I designed one and turned this into a component. And now I can quickly create multiple versions. Each one stays linked to the original. But I can adjust specific details like text or price in different instances without affecting the design itself. You may be wondering, why did the price and text just change in some instances? Why not in the rest of them? Well, this is a concept of component variables. I'll show you this in detail in few minutes. So this means your workflow becomes much cleaner, faster and way more efficient. Instead of managing a dozen individual items, you're just managing a few smart components. And if you ever need to update something, like a font or a style, you do it once and the whole site stays consistent. So this means your workflow becomes much cleaner, faster and way more efficient. Instead of managing a dozen individual items, you're just managing a few smart components. And if you ever need to update something, like a font or a style, you do it once and the whole site stays consistent. Alright, now that we know what components are, now let's build one and we're going to start with something simple, a button. First let's open up Framer and start with a blank canvas. I'll grab the frame tool and draw a basic button. Let's make it 200 pixels wide and 60 pixels tall. Now we need to add some text inside. So I'll add a text layer and type click me. I will convert the frame to stack and set the font to something nice and readable. Alright, looks good. But right now this is just a normal button. If we copy and paste it, we are back to the same old problem. We would have to update each copy manually. So instead, let's turn this into a component. To do that, I'll select the button, right click and choose create component. 
Now this is an actual framer component. So what's different now? Let's drag out a few copies onto the canvas. They might look the same, but now they are all linked to the main component. And here's the cool part. Watch this. I'll go inside the main component and change the background color. And instantly every single copy updates too. That's the magic of components. Instead of updating each button one by one, you just update the main component and everything stays in sync. Now you can use this button component across your projects. Every time you need a button, just drag out another instance. All right, we have built our first component, but right now every copy of it looks exactly the same. But what if we want some buttons to have different text or maybe different colors? Well, that's where component variables come in. They let us control specific properties of a component without affecting the rest of the copies. Let me show you how this works. First, let's go inside the button component. Right now, the text inside says click me, but every copy has the same text. Suppose if I change one, then they all change, which isn't what we want right now. So let's turn this text into a variable. Now to do that, I select the text inside the component. Now over in the right panel, there is a section called content. I'll click the plus icon and add a variable. Now choose text and name it button label. Now this text is no longer locked to the main component. It's a customizable variable. So what does this actually do? Let's go back to the main canvas and select one of our copies. Look at this. Now in the right panel, we have a button label field. If I type buy now in one button and sign up in another. Now they are different, but still part of the main component. So now if I change the color of the main component, now this will affect the color in all of them. This is super powerful. You get consistency because they all follow the same design, but you also get the flexibility because you can change the content. If you have made it this far, you're seriously leveling up your framer skills. Show some love by liking the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, now let's take this a step further. What if we want different buttons to have different colors? Same idea, we'll use component variables. I'll go inside the main component again and select the button stack. Now in the right panel, under the fill, I'll add a new variable. This time I'll choose color and name it button color. So now, just like we did with the text, we can customize the color for each copy. Let's go back to the main canvas. Look at this. Each button now has a button color option. I'll make this one blue, this one red, and this one green. And just like that, we have different looking buttons, but they are still the same component. This is what makes Framer component so powerful. Instead of creating 10 different buttons, we are using one flexible component. Now I can use this button anywhere, on a form, in a navigation bar, or in a menu. Every instance follows the same structure, but it can look different based on our needs. And this isn't just for buttons. You can use component variables for cards, navigation bars, and even full section of a website. Now that we know how to customize a component, let's talk about the most important feature of components, variants. This takes things to another level by letting us create different styles of a same component. Let me show you how this works. I'll go inside the button component we made earlier. Right now, we only have one version of this button. But let's say we want a solid button and an outline button. Instead of making a new component, I'll add a new variant and now we have two versions of our button. Okay, so what's different about them? I'll select the new variant and change the background to transparent. And then I'll add a border to create an outline button. Now we have two styles, a solid button and an outline button inside the same component. So how do we actually use these variants? Let's go back to the main canvas and select one of the button copies. Now in the right panel, we have a variant selector. Look at this. If I change the variant, the button instantly switches between solid and outline. This means we do not need separate components for every style. We just swap the variant and it's done. We can go even further with this. Let's say we need a new style 
a ghost button. I'll go back to the component and add one new variant. This time I'll remove the background and the border, just leaving the text. Now when I go back to the main canvas, I can choose between three styles, solid, outline and the ghost. Now imagine using this for more than just buttons. Variants work for cards, navigation bar or anything that you want different versions for. Instead of managing a bunch of different components, you can create different styles of a single component and just switch the variant when we need them. This makes your workflow way faster and keeps everything organized. Alright, now that we have got variables and variants down, it's time to take things to the next level. What if components could be interactive? Buttons that would change color when we hover over them or menus that slide in. This is what takes our UI from static to dynamic. Let's see how this works. I'll start by selecting our button component on the canvas. Right now, it's just a basic button. Let's add a hover effect so it changes color when you hover over it. To do this, I'll go inside the button component and add a new hover variant. I'll make the background a bit darker. Now check this out. When I hover over the button, it smoothly changes color. And just like that, we have added interactivity to our button without writing a single line of code. Now let's add a click interaction. So when someone clicks the button, it shrinks slightly to give a feedback. I'll go inside the component and add another variant. But this time select the pressed option and scale the button down slightly. Now when I click the button, it shrinks slightly making it more responsive. We can take this further using the smooth animations. Let's say we have a card component and we want it to expand as we click on it. I'll make a simple card component with an image and text inside. Now I'll add a new variant where the card is bigger and reveals more content. I'll set up a click interaction. So when the card is clicked, it animates to the expanded version. It can be done using the thunderbolt icon or you can use the right sidebar. I'll also tweak the animation settings to add a smooth transition. Now when I click the card, it expands smoothly to show more details. This kind of animation makes your UI feel more polished and engaging. Adding these small interactions make a huge difference. Your website feels more smoother, more modern and more fun to use. And the best part, this is all done visually, no coding required. The use cases and the examples of components are practically infinite. So many crazy animations can be made using components. We can create custom accordions, tab animations and even super crazy button animations. The possibilities are endless. You can find the remix link of all the files in the description. Alright, let's talk about making these components responsive because your design needs to work on every screen size, not just desktops. Let's understand this using the example of a navbar. Let's take a pre-built navbar from Framer and break it down. This way, we can see how it's structured and how to make it adapt to different screen sizes without messing the whole layout. First, let's grab a pre-made navbar from Framer. I'll drop it onto the canvas. And you'll see it already has a logo and menu links and a hamburger icon for mobile breakpoint. Now let's take a closer look at how it works. We can see it's actually a component with different variants. There's only one variant for desktop, which is the primary variant and another one for mobile. This is the key idea. Instead of manually adjusting styles on different screen sizes, we use variants to create different versions of a component. The navbar has two variants for mobile. 
one variant when the nav bar is closed and another variant when the nav bar is opened by clicking on the hamburger icon for different breakpoints you can select what type of variant you should use so for the mobile breakpoint we will select the mobile closed variant now when i resize the preview the nav bar automatically switches between these variants this concept of using different variants for different breakpoints can be used across many elements let's take this accordion for example i created separate set of variants specially for mobile and tablet variants as we go from desktop to mobile variant we decrease the size of text and boxes so it looks perfect on mobile breakpoint now when i switch between the breakpoints the accordion adjusts perfectly see how powerful this is variants plus breakpoints is equal to fully responsive components you can use this for nav bar accordions cards buttons pretty much anything all right before we wrap this chapter up let's quickly talk about nested components a simple but powerful way to make your designs more usable and powerful first let's understand what nested components are in a nutshell nested components are just components inside other components letting you build flexible and modular designs where changes to one part are automatically adjusted everywhere it's used let me show you how this works using a simple example let's say we have a card with an image a title and a button instead of having a fixed button inside each card we can turn the button into a separate component this lets us swap different button styles without changing the entire card for example one card might have a buy now button while another has a learn more button but both still follow the same card design and that's the core idea behind the nested components you combine smaller components to create bigger and scalable designs we'll go back to the example of accordion within the accordion component i made another component for the toggle switch this toggle switch is a component with its own custom animations and its different variants are used here this is just one example nested components are used everywhere from nav bar to pricing tables literally everywhere and we'll dive into nested components later in the course when we'll start building our first website from scratch for now just remember if you find yourself repeating certain elements but still need some customization that's where you need nested components all right that brings us to the end of chapter 4 of our master framework course we covered a lot from what components are to how to optimize them for different breakpoints you now know how to create and use components work with component variables for customization how to create variants and use them efficiently optimize components for different screen sizes use nested components to build modular designs this is a huge step forward in mastering framer but there are many advanced concepts on components that we still need to master like full usage of nested components code overrides in components dynamic components and its cms integration but we will learn these concepts as we start applying them later in the course and trust me these concepts will make your workflow more faster and efficient in the next chapter we'll take things further by talking in detail about responsiveness and mobile first websites we'll also talk in detail about breakpoints so stay tuned as exciting things are coming up if you found this video helpful make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and comment down what is your favorite part in the video now since you are mastering framer why don't you understand the key differences between webflow and framer in this video